From the moment of the first space launch up until now, mankind has been sending various devices and people into space using missiles. The satellite's launch is not something unique today. They are launched on commercial launch vehicles of average companies and even universities that are not the most famous in the world. For example, Nepal, Bhutan, Laos, Angola and Rwanda have been seen in space. However, launching a single satellite costs between $10 million and $400 million depending on the craft. A Pegasus XL vehicle can lift 443 kilograms into low Earth orbit for $13.5 million. Launching a heavy satellite will require more lift. An Ariane 5G rocket can launch an 18,000 kilogram satellite into low orbit for $165 million. On the 17th January 2017, the private American SpaceX company managed to make a breakthrough in the space industry. For the first time, the Falcon 9 launch vehicle landed on a special platform in the Atlantic Ocean. According to Elon Musk, this saved $60 million in a single launch. That is how much it costs to build a launch vehicle which can now easily return to Earth. The launch price of a commercial satellite up to 5.5 tons by the Falcon 9 launch vehicle is declared by the manufacturer as $67 million. Since the invention of the rocket, there have been no other good methods of launching satellites into space. But it looks like a cheaper and more impressive way to put satellites into orbit may appear. What if, instead of launching satellites into space, we could launch them using a catapult? In the 1960s, the United States and Canada launched the High Altitude Research Project. As part of this project, methods were developed for launching artificial Earth satellites into low orbits using space guns. Specialists assembled a 406mm gun with a barrel length of 40 meters, capable of firing 180kg missile at a speed of 3600 meters per second. It was enough for the satellite to be sent on a suborbital flight. But for the satellite's launch into near-Earth orbit, such power was not enough. The missile sent into space needed a rocket engine. It was this ambitious and a little bit crazy idea that formed the basis of the Spin Launch Project, founded by entrepreneur Jonathan Johnny. He previously developed the solar-powered drone Titan Aerospace Startup and sold it to Google. Since its founding in 2014, Spin Launch has been headquartered in an old microprocessor factory near Google's main office. Two years later, engineers assembled the first test centrifuge with a diameter of 12 meters. After spinning, the missile flew out of the gun at a speed of up to 6,500 kilometers per hour. The idea was promising, and the company was able to attract investments from such giants as Google Ventures, Airbus, and Bayer. With this money, the company began building its headquarters in Long Beach, California, and flight equipment at Spaceport America. Spin Launch began the development of the world's first kinetic space launch system in 2015. The purpose of its development was the future idea when rockets and satellites will be sent into space with zero emissions, without harming the environment. The technology involves accelerating kinetic rockets to tremendous speed while being on Earth using a disc-shaped vacuum chamber with a launch tube, through which a spin missile is launched for spaceflight at the right time. The Spin Launch Accelerator will speed up the launch vehicle containing the satellite to 5,000 miles per hour, which is 8,000 kilometers per hour, using a rotating carbon fiber arm inside a vacuum chamber. The company uses existing industrial equipment and available materials to develop an innovative accelerator system, achieving hypersonic launch speeds without the need for any extraordinary advances in materials, science, or the use of new technologies. After reaching the stratosphere, a small low-cost propulsion stage provides the final velocity required for access to orbit and positional flight. Using this unique approach, Spin Launch offered a completely new way to access space. It is hoped that the technology developed by Spin Launch will save up to 70% of rocket fuel and in general reduce the cost of launching rockets into low Earth orbit. A kinetic accelerator prototype a vertical vacuum chamber comparable in height to the Statue of Liberty, was developed in 2021 and called the Suborbital Accelerator. In October 2021, the first Spin Launch test flight successfully accelerated the test vehicle to supersonic speed and ended with a reusable aircraft recovery. 
Since then, the suborbital system has conducted regular test flights with various payloads at speeds in excess of 1,000 miles per hour at the American Space Center in New Mexico. NASA was one of the parties most interested in this technology. It recently decided to help spin launch with another system test. The agreement is part of a NASA flight program that presents promising technologies for space exploration, discovery, and expanding space trade through suborbital testing with industry flight providers. The program is funded by NASA, headquartered in Washington, D.C., and directed by NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California. NASA's Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley is requesting and evaluating technologies to be tested on commercial aircraft. In 2022, NASA and SpinLaunch will launch a small missile at a speed of 1,600 km per hour. It will be equipped with sensors that will collect important data for researchers. They will be carefully studied and used to improve technology. The recent NASA launch agreement marks a key landmark as Spin Launch shifts its focus from technology development to commercial proposals, said Jonathan Johnny. The suborbital accelerator in New Mexico is just the beginning. The company also plans to build a coastal orbital launcher. To reach orbit, the payload would be launched from the same facility three times the size of New Mexico. If it is successful, the first official satellite's launch using a centrifuge will be in 2025.